Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads, and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Yesterday's Gospel, if we summarize it, sorry, last week's, last Sunday's Gospel, if we summarize it, could be, it could be found in the responsorial sum of last Sunday, and that is, the vineyard of the Lord, of the Lord is the house of Israel. It is ironic that just a week after, we see Israel at war, Palestine at war. You see so many images in social media about what we read, about destroying murderers and burning their city. That these are the images flashed to us consecutively, daily for that matter, and it has just begun. It's not ended. And that is why in this liturgy, in this Eucharist, I would request all of you to pray for peace. And let us, on, let us offer this Mass for peace. In the universal prayer of the church for this Sunday, last night, the first antiphon was, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And so in the common intercessions, I added that we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for the peace of Israel. And at the same time, we pray for the peace of Palestine, of Bethlehem, of Nazareth, and Gaza. They are equally as important. The parable in today's gospel wanted to teach a certain paradox, a paradoxical situation whereby there is a feast, there is a banquet, and everyone you know, is invited, and yet these people who are invited ignored the invitation, did not want to go to the banquet. Can you imagine throwing a party Inviting your friends, inviting people whom you want to go to your party. And these people say, no, all of them. I'm busy. I have work. And they don't appear. Imagine a banquet like that. So there's this paradox about something about happiness. And yet, suddenly, it turns to rage and anger. And it ends by going back to the party, inviting everybody, everybody. Do not distinguish anymore, good and bad alike, the poor, the lame, the blind, the beggars. Bring them all in 
and there was a party. Of course, this is a parable. But what lessons do we learn from this parable? We learn very ironic situations in our life. We want to throw parties because parties usually glorify the host, the party giver. If you have a successful party, it is an affirmation of your social status. That is why people throw parties. Even dictators throw parties. I remember our Philippine dictator before throwing parties and throwing diamonds in the party. Diamonds in the party. To demonstrate social status while the rest of his people are poor. And then you will say, is that a party? That is the lesson that Jesus draws for us today. We have common dreams, and, we, and these common dreams pertain to what? It pertains to a good life. A good life. The responsorial psalm today summarizes for us. It is living in the house of the Lord. And the house of the Lord is bountiful. And the house of the Lord is peaceful. That is our common hope. And yet, the more important lesson is that in, embedded in today's gospel is that the Lord is telling us, do not, do not invite only those you want. Do not invite only those for whom you have a strategic objective to attain. I invite this one because this one can help me. I invite this one because this one is rich. I invite this one because this one can invest. The lesson that Jesus teaches us is this. In the end, those who were not invited, in the end, the one that will determine your plan is not yourself. It is those you have excluded. And that is why, in the end, the command is go out into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. For the plan of God is for everybody. And the plan that excludes God will include all those we exclude. When we watch social media, when we look into what is unfolding in the war in Israel and Palestine, we learn the lesson. Not only that no one benefits from the war, but that there are so many others excluded. There are so many others working in the vineyard, literally, literal vineyards. I hear news of 30,000 Thais working in the vineyards of Israel, and equally 30,000 Filipinos working in the vineyards of Israel, and all of them are silent. These are examples of those who are not invited to the feast. So for Jesus, looking at our situation today and learning from the gospel today means posing to ourselves the same question. If I go to the house of the Lord, if like the prophet Isaiah in the first reading, prophesying a mountain of peace 
and a mountain of abundance, which is the promise of the Lord of hosts, a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure choice wines. That is the house of God. That is the mountain of the Lord. That is the feast that is to come. But we can only come to the feast if we modify our invitations. If we send out invitations, not just to the few and the chosen, but to go out to look for the silent, to look for the neglected, to look for the excluded. There, in the main roads of our life, and invite to the feast whomever we find.